Hello. In today's world, when we turn on the news or flip open that newspaper, we often read about stories and news articles that are uncertain and more negative um, and put, bring us down. So in this video, we are going to share some stories that are uplifting, that are encouraging, that are positive, that highlight acts of kindness and service um, around the world that we might have heard before, or maybe this is the first time you've heard of them. So in this video, we are going to share some good news stories. And along with those good news stories, there'll be opportunities for you to reminisce and, and prompt some engaging questions that you can ask yourself as well as share um, your wisdom and stories to your family members. So I hope you enjoy. While many species remain critically threatened with extinction, some animals have been making a comeback due to dedicated conservation efforts. In Mexico, the jaguar population has increased significantly over the past decade thanks to public policies that help slow the process of deforestation in and around wildlife preserves. Working with ranchers, the Mexican government offered compensation for cattle losses and subsided electric fences to prevent the jaguars from killing livestock. As a result, there are more, more jaguars living in parts of Mexico today that previously never saw them. Another comeback story resolves around the Western monarch butterfly, whose numbers hit an all-time low in 2020. A year later, an estimated 50,000 Western monarchs were counted at their overwintering sites, making a 96% increase over the previous year. Why the sudden jump in numbers? Exer experts aren't completely sure, but the best guess is that it comes down to good luck. Monarch butterflies can re reproduce exponentially in the right conditions. Good weather, adequate rainfall, food availability, and other factors. While survival of the species is still fragile, with the right conditions, there is hope. Despite the impact of climate change, habitat destruction, and food shortages due to drought, experts are encouraged by this upward trend. These are all positive indicators that conservation efforts are bringing efforts can bring about positive results. Just like in this story, um, there have been increases um, in populations of different species in wildlife. Have you ever participated in an organization or done some type of effort or work to help bring awareness to extinction of wildlife or have helped save wildlife or helped our environment, our earth in some way or form. Share with someone, a family member, a friend, your experiences in helping make our earth and the wildlife that lives here so much more beautiful and appreciated. This next story is called Death Gain. Conventional wisdom tells us that being hearing impaired is a disability, but a high school football team in Riverside, California showed the world last season that it could actually be a secret weapon. Players from the Calif California School for the Deaf defied the odds when they ended their 2021 season with an undefeated 11-0 record and a shot at the state championship, the first in the school's history. Despite many obstacles, like missing the previous season due to COVID and being frequently mocked by their opponents, the team displayed incredible fortitude in pursuing their championship goal on game, goal one game at a time. 
A huge part of their success came from leveraging what the players called deaf gains, like having a heightened awareness of the visual cues on the field and a deeper sense of connection with one another. Relying on American Sign Language to communicate, coaches were able to relay plays quickly and sleepily, allowing the players to skip huddles and move the ball down the field faster than their opponents could defend them. Every victory was a testament to the ability of deaf people to achieve at the highest level. The Cubs' triumphant season and their coach's personal story will be brought to the screen by a creative team that advocates for a representation of people with disabilities in a film. How do you view a disability? Do you see a disability as a hindrance or an asset like this team in California did? I know for me, um, be personally, having a disability um, and having to go through my life um, reaching obstacles and overcoming obstacles. Um, disabilities can also um, be a growing experience and a way to help others and, and help understand others with disabilities. So for me, I think having a disability is not a hindrance because there's always a way to overcome it. Um, it might be look differently um, and it might take a little bit of work and a little more effort and focus, um, but anything is possible, no matter if you have a disability or not. So have you had an opportunity personally or have you known someone that has a disability and how they've utilized that disability as an asset or a way um, of strength or a way of helping another person see that it doesn't stop them from accomplishing their goals or living their life. In January, the world's oldest person, Kane Tanka, Tanka celebrated her 119th birthday in her native Jap Japan, inching her way toward the all-time age record of 122 years held by the late Janine Louise Kelment of France. It seems as if 100 is a new 80 when you consider the amazing feats achieved by today's centenarians. The past fall, Betty Soskin became the oldest active park ranger in the United States when she celebrated her 100th birthday. A file clerk during World War II, she became a park ranger at the age of 85 at the Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park in Richmond, California. Soskin was humbled when a local middle school was renamed in her honor. Julia Hurricane Hawkins, a 105-year-old sprinter, from Louisiana set a record in the 100 meter dash for a second time at the 2021 Louisiana Senior Games competition. On the suggestion of her children, this retired teacher took up sprinting at the age of 100 after quitting biking. Hawkins credits her longevity to remaining active and following her passions. Sisters Julia Cabriva age 104, and Lucy Pochop, age 102, and Frances, Frances Compas, age 100, attribute their long lives to home-cooked meals, daily walks, and strong social ties. Having grown up together on the family farm, the centenarians continue to be part of one another's lives as next-door neighbors in Atwood, Kansas. When you consider how rare it is to live to the century mark, these sisters truly are remarkable. Do you feel or do you see the age 100 be the new 80? In your opinion, what are the pros and cons of living a long life? 
What have you contributed to your long life? Share your wisdom with family and friends on how to live their life to the fullest, no matter what age you are and how long you live. This next story is called Thankful for a Mistaken Identity. In our interconnected world today, it is not unusual to receive a wayward text message that was not intended for you. In the case of 17-year-old Jamal Hilton of Mesa, Arizona, the decision to respond to the sender of such a, me such a message changed his life and hers for forever. In 2016, Wander Dench mistakenly texted a Thanksgiving dinner invitation to a number she re believed was her grandson's. When Jamal inquired about her identity, the pair exchanged selfies to clear up the confusion. He then asked if the invitation is still stood, to which Wanda replied in the affirmative. This simple act of kindness began a six-year friendship, which is marked every Thanksgiving with a family photo, as well as other meetings throughout the year. The close-knit pair, pair has experienced lots of change over the years, including Jamal's transition into adulthood, his long-term relationships with girlfriend Michaela, and the 2020 death of Wanda's husband, Lonnie. Net Next Netflix recently announced that they will bring this heartwarming story of generosity and friendship to the big screen. Have, have you ever received a message through voicemail, um, a letter from some stranger, and did you respond to it or vice versa? Um, have you received a response message to a mistake that you made when sending a message to someone you thought you knew, but it was actually a stranger? What was the end result? In what ways have you extended kindness in your life to someone? Or vice versa, how has kindness been reciprocated to you? And how has that kindness rippled to your life or to that person's life and your extended family? Not many people enjoy going to the hospital. But for patients who need regular dialysis treatments to survive, it is a way of life. Dorothy Gimrick's sister is one such person and the inspiration behind a knitting project that extends warm hugs to dialysis patients. A Minnesota knit knitting group known as the Nitty Gritty Knitters has generously donated their time and talents to craft homemade arm warmers to comfort dialysis patients who experience a chill during their hours long treatment. Dorothy created a pattern that strikes a balance between covering the hands and forearms while still allowing for easy access to the part of the arm used in treatment. The knitters who have traditionally made hats, shawls, and even teddy bears enthusiastically took up the charge with a renewed sense of purpose, using colorful yarn for their unique creations. The nitty gritty knitters spread sunshine throughout their community. Have you ever been part of a group or, or organization that had the same interest as you, such as a book club or even a knitting group or a gaming club? What are the benefits of being part of such of a group? And then if you were part of a, such of a group, was there a time where you gathered together and you were, and you came up with an idea or a service project? Were you able to share your own skills and talents and interests and sharing kindness and spreading that sunshine to someone in need? The next story is called Middle School Marvels. Middle school can be an awkward time for most kids as they transition from childhood to adolescence. 
For Caleb Anderson, he skipped over both middle school and high school to enroll in classes at Georgia Tech at the age of 13, becoming the youngest student on campus. This aerospace engineering major was actually accepted at the age of 12 and spent his first year of post-secondary education studying at the local community college. Given his age, he did not qualify for merit-based scholarships, but thanks to a grant from the Steve and Marjorie Harvey Foundation, Caleb is now able to pursue his studies with a dream of working at SpaceX. Another remarkable preteen from Oklahoma, Davin Johnson saved two lives in one day in December of 2021. While at school, he noticed that a classmate was choking on something. Having watched YouTube videos about life-saving skills, he performed the Heimlich maneuver to dislodge the cap from a water bottle that had cut off his classmate's air supply. Then, on his way home from school, Davon helped a woman who was disabled escape from a house fire. His bravery, selflessness, and ability to act decisively in a crisis earned Davon special recognition from the Muskoski County Sheriff's Office, which is fitting since one day he would like to be an EMT. What was middle school like for you? Did something happen during that time that was remarkable that changed your life or changed someone else's life? Did you ever have an experience in your life where you had to be brave and face your fears? This next story is called Making the Right Moves. Chess is a complex game that often tests one's patience and perseverance. For Damien Fletcher, who grew up in Compton, California, chess was more than a game. It taught him several important life skills, like thinking before acting, waiting for the right opportunity, and solving not just the problem right in front of you, but also being prepared for the unexpected event around the bend. These lessons served him so well that he decided to create a community outreach program to teach young people to play chess. Troubled by the negative influences of crime, gangs, and drugs in his old neighborhood, Fletcher returned to Compton to start Train of Thought, an affordable chess education program that develops students' minds and character, preparing them to cope with the challenges of the modern world. Since its founding, Train of Thought has partnered with over 100 schools across the United States and instructed more than 50,000 students to make the right moves. Recently, the service expanded to include virtual chess clubs for students ages 5 to 17 who cannot meet in person. They also began offering private online chess lessons to provide continuity and help students retain learned skills. After Train of Thought was featured on the National Evening News, viewers were mo moved to help and donations began to pour in to support this inspiring program for low-income students. They hope to expand to other countries. Do you know how to play chess? What type of lessons, life lessons, have you learned from knowing how to play chess? Just like in the story, you learn patience and perseverance and problem solving. Have you taken any life lessons from any type of sport or game that you have played and you've taken those lessons you learned on the court or field into real life? I hope you have enjoyed hearing some of these good news stories and it has inspired you, has allowed you to reminisce maybe with these helpful 
engaging questions after each of the stories um, and has just brightened your day because in this world full of negativity and and not so good news it's always good to hear that there's still good in the world and that there's so many good things that people are doing for others have a good day and we'll see you next time